Here's a quick rundown of what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is look at three tips from an actual past driving examiner. Then we're going to have a quick story time about where I, myself and a student nearly messed up big time, which nearly cost them a driving test and cost me some driving lessons. So you guys don't make the same mistake as I did. And then we're going to focus on some key areas of what the examiner is actually looking for. Try and put ourselves in the examiner's shoes and think like a driving examiner. Do not look at the driving examiner when they are tapping the iPad or tablet or whatever you want to call it. There are not just two buttons on the iPad. There is not just a driving fault and a serious fault button. No, they actually have to tap that iPad for just about anything. Every time they ask you to pull the car over, they might tap it just to say that they're planning to ask you to pull the car over. They can tap it for hundreds of reasons. But one reason they definitely will tap it for is if you keep trying to look over at the examiner instead of focusing on the road. Because this is also very similar to trying to read a text message, which as we know, isn't good. Why? Because this is distracting you from the road. So do yourself a favor, ignore what they're doing and focus on passing your driving test. The second tip from a driving examiner is to make sure that you get your show me, tell me questions right. Why, you might ask? They're only epoxy driving fault. Yes, they are. But they also make you look really, really unorganized. That is not a good start to the driving test. Oh, first thing, what's a tell me question? Oh, I don't know. I didn't bother. It doesn't look good. So do yourself a favor. Have a look at the description below. Make sure you re revise all of the show me, tell me questions. There's not a huge amount. The questions are there with the answers. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Tip number three, and not the most exciting one, but extremely important. The examiner said the biggest problem with people failing their driving test is they haven't actually practiced enough. And they're absolutely right because the crux of it is we weren't born and made to drive a car. We were made to run. So driving does not come naturally to us. And that is why it takes most people over 40 hours of practice to pass a car. Some people exceed well over 70 hours which is perfectly normal. So if you haven't reached 40 hours, do not be pressuring yourself to be sitting your test. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying you're in the very low percentile. Okay, now those three tips are done and dusted. Story time. What did Josh do now? I'll tell you what I did. So I was teaching a lovely student, my nephew, in fact, bless his cotton socks, James, if you're listening. And he was getting very close to being test ready. In fact, he had his test in a week's time. Now, because he was my nephew, I was a bit laxy daisy with the checks. As we get closer to the driving test, that's when I start to actually introduce some of the information about the test, really start getting students ready for the test. So at this point, I mentioned to James about the eyesight test, reading a number plate from 20 minutes meters away. I see James most weeks, bear in mind. So I hadn't really double checked that at the beginning. Why would I? I've never seen him wearing glasses before. James' eyes have always been fine. Well, it turned out I was wrong. James was unable to read the number plate from 20 meters away, which was actually my fault. But because of that, with his test in just a week's time, we had to then very quickly move the driving test. We then also had to make sure James was booked in with the optician and he got some glasses on order pronto. So moral to the story is, make sure you can read a number plate from 20 meters away before even starting your driving lessons. Then nobody's gonna be very disappointed. Now, if you really want to beat the driving test, you need to be able to think like an examiner. What actually goes through the examiner's head during the driving test? Let's have a look. So the first point is to really try and get familiar with the area surrounding the test center. This doesn't just mean pop down on one Sunday afternoon and have a quick drive around for 10 minutes. This means you need to drive around on a Friday, a Monday, and a Sunday. Because believe me, each day is a very different. You also need to make sure you're going at different times. What's it like at rush hour? What's it like during the, the morning school traffic? What's it like mid-afternoon about 11 o'clock? And then finally, you need to make sure you're doing it in different weather. Have you done it in rain? Have you done it in colder weather? And they may actually start doing driving tests during nighttime as well, which means it's important that you are able to drive in the dark. So make sure you're comfortable. And maybe you're thinking, Josh, how does this relate to the driving examiner? Well, if you're confident leaving that driving test center, that examiner is going to know. They will have done these driving tests over a hundred times. If you can leave that driving test center when your nerves are at their absolute worst and show them you know what you're doing. Your chances of passing are going to be far higher. Next big tip is to really focus in on those hard areas. And what do I mean by this? Well, when you go on a driving test, it's well known that there's a number of tough areas that the examiner is going to end up taking you during the driving test. They aren't personally taking you, but they end up being on the route. The reason for this is because they need you to be able to do these scenarios so you're going to survive safely in the real world. Now, if you speak to any driving instructor in your area, they are going to know very well where these areas are. In my area, for instance, there's a horrendous one-way system, which is signposted 
with a million signs, hardly any road markings at all, and it's just a nightmare. Then we've got an awful roundabout with three lanes, and most people that have passed that test don't know what the hell to do, so learners don't stand a chance. Now, my point being, if you make sure you get a driving instructor and at least make sure you focus on these tougher areas, they'll know where they are, you'll be confident to do these during your driving tests and won't suddenly get shell-shocked when you get there for the first time and think, what on earth am I doing? Can you just hold on? I'm in the middle of a video for goodness sake. Some people make sure this is switched off during your driving test. I know that no one in the right mind is going to answer the phone while they're driving, especially on a driving test. However, it's not going to be a comfortable situation if your friend thinks it's funny to call you during your driving test with your phone ringing in the background. It's just not a conversation you want to have. Do yourself a favor, look organized and turn your phone off. Next big tip is make sure your car is driving test ready. What do we mean? Well, first of all, you need to make sure there are no warning lights on the dash. Warning lights means no test. You also need to make sure your tires are legal. You can test this with a 20 pence piece or get yourself one of these beauties and it'll just show you how much depth is left on the tire. You then need to make sure you've got L plates. The examiner would like you to have an L plate on the center front of the car. So try and make sure it's on the center and then somewhere on the back as well. For the examiner to conduct the test, if you are in your own car, they will need a spare stick on mirror. So try and bring yours with you as well for the examiner. Don't get me wrong. If you don't have your L plates or your mirror, the examiner may very well have a spare inside, but it is not going to make you look organized. It's not going to make you look good. And if you can, let's avoid it. Now, the first thing the examiner is going to want to see when they meet you is your provisional driving license. They are not going to be keen on you rushing back to the car because you left it in your wallet. They're not going to be keen on waiting for you to jumble around in your handbag. So do yourself a favor, have it in hand ready to show the examiner straight away. The next thing the examiner is going to want you to sign a candidate declaration. For this, you are going to need a pen. So do yourself a favor again, make sure you have one handy. The examiner may have one with them, but they might not. So have a pen handy. Now, as I say, those little tips there, they're not going to make or break your driving test, but they are going to put the examiner in a better, more easygoing mood for the beginning of your test, and they're going to make you look good and organized, which is what we want. I don't care what anyone says. We all judge books by their covers. I do it all the time. I judge loads of books. I look at the pictures and I go, that looks rubbish, that looks rubbish, that looks rubbish. And I haven't read the book. And I think we do that with people as well. I think it's in our nature. Point being, first impressions count. So if I was going for my driving test, I also wouldn't turn up in my joggers. Why? Because it just doesn't look good. It doesn't show you're prepared. You're about to embark on something that is life-changing. Show that examiner you are fully in it to win it. I'm not suggesting go suited and booted. I'm just saying look smart. Go in there with a smile. Be polite to the examiner. Remember, the examiner wants you to pass. They don't enjoy failing people. But you have to be a competent and safe driver in order for them to do that. But remember, they're not your enemy. Me, so treat them with respect. Now, this is a big one. You are not with your driving instructor today. You are not with your mom and dad or whoever you've been learning to drive with. You are with a person who has never seen you drive before. They've never met you. For all they know, this could be your very first driving lesson. If you want to really increase your chances, you need to make sure they feel safe and relaxed. How are you going to do this, you might be asking? Well, there's lots of things you could do. For instance, imagine you're taking your grandparents out for the first time. How would you drive? Would you go erratically around the corners into the junctions? Or would you try and make sure sure they're smooth as possible. You don't want to shake their backs about. Or if it helps, imagine you are chauffeuring that examiner. He's paid for your car for 40 minutes to see the sights. Well, you need to keep him nice and relaxed and calm to see those sights, don't you? Let's have a look at some major do nots on the driving test. The first one, do not rush meeting traffic or tight gaps. Never reverse quickly. Why would you want to go quickly? You don't need to. They leave like 10 minutes for your reverse maneuver. Take your time. They want to see safety, not speed. Do not break too late going to the junction. They want to see that you have seen the junction or the traffic lights turning red or the pedestrian crossing. For them to see that, they need to see your foot moving from the gas to the brake. Make sure anytime you're reversing, you are looking behind you. This is so important because if you don't look behind you when you're going backwards, you can't see anything. Make sure you slow down if the road gets tighter. The more traffic closing in on the road, the smaller the gap, the slower you go. Do make sure you keep a good distance to vehicles in front, particularly on your dual carriageways. Remember, only a fool ignores the two second rule. Do make sure you use handbrakes on hills. It's just a tool. That's what it's there for. Use it. But on the other hand, you don't want to be 
overly cautious. This means you need to try and drive like you normally drive with your driving instructor. Do not suddenly change your driving style on your driving test day. Don't start being overly cautious and going much slower, like 20 or 25 in a 30 zone for no reason at all. That's not going to make you look good. It's not going to make you look confident. Just try and be normal. If your driving instructor has agreed for you to go for your driving test, that is because they believe in you being ready. Take mine from that. Now, this is a real good one. If your driving exam is being quiet on the driving test, why is that? Well, as a driving instructor, when I'm teaching someone, we can be having a good conversation. But if I know if there's a tough area coming up or this person can't multitask, then I'm not going to speak. So if your driving examiner is being quiet, they are thinking they're letting you focus on the road because they're trying to help you pass your driving test. So appreciate that and enjoy the silence by focusing ahead or switch the radio on. On the other hand, your driving examiner may be particularly chatty. Well, if you are fine with this and you are confident to talk and drive at the same time, no problem at all. Always focus on the road first and minimize replies until you're absolutely feeling safe to reply. There is also absolutely nothing wrong with commentary driving, which means speaking out loud as you are driving. Believe it or not, this is actually massively encouraged, particularly when training in the ambulance service, police service, because it helps focus on those situations when you really need to be paying attention. And you may find it actually helps dissipate some of those nerves because in fo instead of focusing on previous mistakes, you're going to be focusing ahead on what's coming down the road. This also makes it far easier for the examiner to predict what you're doing, putting them at a lot more ease and understanding that you are competent and you can drive. Now, during the driving test, you will also be doing one of four maneuvers. You may be asked to do a parallel reverse park, or you may be asked to do a forward bay park, which will then require you to reverse back out the bay. Or finally, you may be asked to pull over on the right and then reverse two or three car spaces. If you notice, all of those maneuvers have one thing in common. You have to reverse. So you are just showing the examiner during that maneuver that you can safely reverse. And as I mentioned previously, the most important you thing you can do is while reversing, look behind you, not stare in the mirrors. This way, you're going to have a far better vision around the car than you would if you just looked in a mirror. You also need to make sure that you do the maneuver very, very slowly. I'm talking one, two, three miles an hour would be absolutely adequate. It's going to make it far easier and you're going to make far less mistakes. Remember, if you do not get the maneuver right straight away, do not panic. You are allowed to pull forward and fix it. Now, officially, there are no limits to how many times you're allowed to pull forward and reverse. However, in my experience, if you pull the car forward and reverse more than one extra time, you will likely fail your driving test. Now, don't get me wrong. I have seen people pass by doing it more than once. And this has been in those rare situations where the driver has been particularly great on their driving test and the maneuver has been in a high pressure situation. Now, a couple of big don'ts. The examiner is going to know quite clearly by this point, by the end of your driving test, if you are checking your mirrors when needed. And it's about effective observations, meaning the junctions when you're overtaking cars, anything like that. The next one is no, the examiner will not expect you to use your handbrake every single time you stop that car. Yes, if you're stopping the car for more than five, 10 seconds, definitely get the handbrake on. Yes, if you're stopping on a hill, instantly get that handbrake on. But if you're just stopping for a couple of seconds and there's no hill involved, then there's no need to use the handbrake. The final one is just try and remember to drive normally. And if you stall, that's okay. Stalling's fine. It's how you deal with the stall that counts. I am Josh, your online driving instructor. Please do not forget to like and subscribe and check out my Patreon. Take care all, and I will see you all very soon. Peace. And I'll go.